Welcome to this module on CGE Microsimulation Modeling for Distributive and Poverty Analysis. Today we will talk about the Fully Integrated Approach. Let's start with the introduction. Why are CGE and MS models combined? There is a growing interest in combining computable general equilibrium CGE models and microsimulation MS models in assessing the effectiveness of pro-poor macroeconomic policy. CGE models capture macro and sectoral effects of policy changes. They are based on consistent national accounts data which captures the interrelation among institutional sectors and industries. MS models allow individuals and real households to adjust their behavior in response to policy shocks. They require micro-level data to perform distributive and poverty analysis at the individual level. Considering the linkage between the two models, CGE-MS models can be grouped into two broad categories, the integrated approach and the layered approach. The integrated approach replaces the representative household categories in the CGE model with individual households from a nationally representative survey. The layered or sequential approach runs the CGE and MS models one after the other. For example, the output of one model is used as the input by the other model. There are three types of layered CGE MS approaches the top down approach, the bottom up approach, and the iterative approach. In the top down approach, the CGE model simulates the effects of the policy changes at the macro level and passes the results to the MS model. In the bottom-up approach, the MS model simulates the effects of the policy changes at the micro level and passes the results to the CGE model. In the iterative approach, shocks are transmitted from one model to the other until the two models converge. The top-down approaches are split into a behavioral approach and a non-behavioral approach. Behavioral CGE MS models use econometric techniques to allow individuals and households to adjust their behavior to policy changes. Non behavioral CGE MS models do not require econometric methods, thus, individuals do not adjust their behavior in response to policy changes. The other layered approaches, for example, bottom up and iterative approaches, allow individuals and households to adjust their behavior to policy changes. Three approaches for non-behavioral CGE-MS models are proposed, the non-parametric approach, the re-weighting approach, and the micro-accounting approach. The non-parametric approach applies a random selection of employment statuses depending on changes in the aggregate labor market conditions. The reweighting approach consists of altering the sample weights in the MS model in order to reproduce changes in employment and other population variables from the CGE model. The micro-accounting approach assesses the immediate or short-run effects of price changes transmitted from the CGE to the MS model, for example, before agents adjust their behavior. Now let's talk about integrating CGE and MS models. Macroeconomic policies are analyzed within an economy-wide framework with few representative household categories. There are two main critiques of the representative household categories in the CGE framework. Kerman's critique of microeconomic assumptions of a representative agent is with reducing the behavior of a group of heterogeneous agents to a single representative household. To perform a distributive and poverty analysis, Income distribution functions are imposed within each household category with a variance estimated from the base year data. In the micro simulation models, distributive and poverty analysis are assessed in a partial equilibrium setting with household or individual level data. The two main critiques of MS models are that policy reforms that affect the whole economy cannot be addressed and that second-order macro effects of targeted policies are not captured. 
There are multiple advantages of integrating individual households from a nationally representative survey into a CGE model. They address the critique on representative households in the CGE models. They avoid the restriction of functional forms in the distributive and poverty analysis. They conduct distributive and poverty analysis of macroeconomic policies. And they capture the economy-wide effect of micro-policies and interventions. The main challenges of integrating individual households from a nationally representative survey into a CGE model are that the reconciliation between macro and micro data is time intensive and that the accessibility to a heavy computational capacity is required because the number of equations increase quickly with the number of households. We will now describe the steps to implement the integrated approach. The integrated CGE-MS approach is implemented in four steps. In step one, the representative household groups in the SAM are aggregated. In step two, the vectors of individual household incomes and expenditures are built using the survey data. In step three, individual household incomes and expenditures are reconciled. And in step four, the aggregate micro-household data are reconciled with the representative household data. Step 1. Aggregate the representative household groups in the SAM. Constructing a fully integrated CGE-MS model requires the use of a social accounting matrix, SAM, and vectors of household incomes and expenditures. The various representative household categories of the SAM are aggregated into one category through the various income sources, for example, labor, capital, and transfers, or YTF, and the different expenditure types, for example, final consumption of goods and services, and transfers, or XTF, and savings. This aggregation facilitates the mapping of incomes, expenditures, and savings between the representative household categories in the SAM and the individual households in the survey data. Step 2. Build individual household income and expenditure vectors. Household incomes and expenditures vectors are generated from a nationally representative household survey. Self-employed labor cost is computed from the estimated implicit wage rate of the individuals and the time spent in self-employment or family business work. Salaried employment and self-employment earnings, for example employment revenues, are computed for all individual households of the survey. The individual household employment revenues follow the labor categorization in the SAM. The capital cost is approximated by the residual profit after deducting self-employed labor costs. As for employment revenues, the capital revenues are computed for all individual households and then grouped according to the capital categories in the SAM. Revenues from domestic transfers, for example inter-household transfers and transfers from firms and the government, and international transfers or remittances are estimated for all survey households. Inter-household transfer revenues are adjusted when necessary and match with the transfer expenses. Transfer expenses towards households, firms and the government, as well as external transfers, are estimated for all survey households. The inter-household transfer expenses are adjusted when necessary to match with the transfer revenues. The survey data records several types of household final consumption expenditures. They are mapped to the categories of goods and services in the SAM. Individual household consumption of goods and services are reorganized to match the categories in the SAM. The analysis of the budget share of household consumption in the survey and the SAM are conducted. The necessary adjustments are made to minimize the discrepancies between the two data sets. Analysis of surveys reveal that incomes declared by households tend to be underestimated relative to expenditures. Thus, survey savings rates are lower than savings rates from the national accounts. Savings rates are estimated for all survey households and adjusted if necessary. In Step 3, 
reconcile individual household incomes and expenditures, some issues are presented. The mismatch between the reference periods of income and consumption data causes an overestimation of consumption due to inflation and consequently an underestimation of savings. An underestimation of incomes generated by household self-employment activities is the principal reason for low income declarations. Therefore, transfer revenues are underestimated and there is a mismatch between domestic transfer revenues and expenses. How do we approach this issue? To solve the problem of underestimated individual household activity and transfer revenues, the following adjustments are made. Household self-employed capital revenues are increased to correct the problem of negative operating surplus. Household income is increased by the change in consumer price index, CPI, and self-employment incomes are adjusted and then imputed to labor, land, and other capital. Household transfer revenues are increased to correct the problem of inter-household transfers and negative savings. Transfer revenues are increased by the source using reliable macro data. Inter-household domestic transfers in and out are then reconciled. Step 4. Reconcile survey and SAM household data. The aggregated household account in the SAM is replaced with thousands of individual household accounts from a nationally representative survey. The SAM is rebalanced using a computerized program based on an optimization function. The cross-entropy method is the most used as it appears to be more precise than other available methods such as the RAS, OLS, and Huber's methods, and more adequate at the disaggregate level. We now move to our final section about distributive and poverty analysis. The distributive analysis computes and compares income distribution in the base year and after policy simulations. For poverty analysis, Foster Green Thorbeck FGT, are the most common poverty indices. For inequality analysis, Gini and Atkinson indices are the most commonly used. An introduction to poverty and inequality measurement is provided by Revelian, 1994, in Duclos and Gregoire, 2002. The freely available DAD software uses the vectors of households or individual level measures of income or consumption expenditure to compute standard distributional indicators and to graph standard distributional curves. Coburn, 2005, proposes procedures for conducting poverty distribution analysis of CGE microsimulation results with DAD. The main requirements to perform distributive and poverty analysis are a household level data from a nationally representative survey to extract household identifiers, sample weights, household grouping variables, and initial household income or consumption expenditures. After simulation, household level incomes or consumption expenditure vectors are generated from the fully integrated CGE MS model. We are at the end of this course on CGE MS modeling for distributive and poverty analysis with a focus on the fully integrated approach. Through it, the course, you have been introduced to the CGE MS models, more specifically why and how CGE and MS models are combined. Then we presented the fully integrated approach with detailed information on its characteristics, advantages, and challenges. An overview of the key steps to implement the fully integrated model was also presented. The course ended with the presentation of a technique to conduct a distributive analysis using the simulation results from the CGE-MS models.